Five years ago, in January 2016, Bitcoin was worth about $400. Five years later, in January 2021, it has climbed to $40,000, which is 100 times or 10,000% growth. You're completely sure of the math. Look at him. My math specialist, look at him. Yeah, I'm sure of the math. Don't forget that along the way, the world's first cryptocurrency managed to soar in price several times and fail just as rapidly, leaving millions of people with colossal losses and more than a few gray hairs. Moreover, the blockchain industry, Bitcoin's unexpected child, has changed a lot during this time and became less understandable not only for the people far from cryptocurrency, but even for the participants of the blockchain market themselves. I don't understand. Well. Uh. How, for example, do Monero, Aave, Polkadot, USDC, CryptoKitties, Wi-Fi coins differ from the more famous Bitcoin and Ethereum? While some grow in value, why do others fail and others seem to do neither, keeping a steady price? Why do legislators accept some coins with open arms while others will expose users to potential criminal liability. Let's figure it out today. Hi guys, Oli Givenov with you on the Ivanov Invest channel talking about token stories. Here we will lift the veil on the blockchain and cryptocurrency market, dispel myths and try to make it as simple as possible. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out the upcoming episodes. Today is the first in the series of episodes where we will dive into the short and simplified tour of some of the various types of cryptocurrencies that exist. So are you ready to take the plunge? When my team and I started this task, we immediately decided to discard the complex technological elements associated with crypto, mining, hashes, transaction blocks, consensus algorithms, and other specifics. Let's just leave all these to the people who are building this amazing new world for us. After all, in order to drive a car, we don't need to understand the structure of the transmission and the internal combustion engine, right? Flash go to buttons, you're confusing me. So putting aside all this techno babble, we decided to provide a simplified classification of various cryptocurrencies, tokens and coins. In here, we'll, we'll understand them as pretty much the same. So that at the consumer level, it may become a bit clearer why there are so many different cryptocurrencies and to help understand how can they be useful for you and me at the moment. And since even with all these attempts, to simplify the material we ended up with loads of it, we decided to follow a simple rule in our token stories, which is one episode, one topic. So welcome to the first part of our crush course on cryptocurrencies, in which we will navigate through the differences between cryptocurrencies and electronic money. And in our future episodes, we will uncover details and differences between utility and security tokens, project tokens at the four different levels of the blockchain infrastructure, what are asset-backed tokens, what types of stable tokens exist, how are CBDCs currently discussed among central banks of different countries in the world, what are NFT tokens, governance tokens, and much, much, much more. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and join us on our journey into the details of this new industry step by step so we can stay on the cutting edge of this new technology. And let's start, as they say, from the very beginning and try to answer the question, what is the difference between the cryptocurrencies and electronic money? As we use any online store or service, we immediately see a bunch of options to pay for our purchases with a variety of electronic payment options. PayPal, Kiwi, Yandex Money, WePay, Alipay, each country has its own permitted set. Moreover, all these payment methods took root long before the appearance of the first cryptocurrency, which we recall is dated back to the year of 2009. So what is the difference? Both crypto and e-payments are in the virtual online space. Both allow you to pay for something. Either of them are prohibited in some countries or allowed in the others. Let's try to figure it out today. And to begin with it, it is quite worth it to start with the understanding what regulators understand by the term called digital currency. So digital currency is a general term for both regulated and unregulated digital money. It is money that is available exclusively in digital form 
and is not associated with cash. Digital currencies are intangible and can be controlled by a computer or electronic wallet that is linked to a specific network. All cryptocurrencies are digital currencies, but not all digital currencies are cryptocurrencies. Uh, I hope I'm not mixing it up. Moreover, there are other types of digital currencies, such as electronic gold or gaming currencies, say the notorious Roblox online gaming currency, something that many children <laughs> in the world are ready to sell their souls for. In other words, digital currency is an umbrella term for all types of currencies that exist in the digital space. Now, let's dive into the specifics and figure out where the differences lie. Logically, we should start with the more familiar electronic money. So electronic money or e-money is simply a digital alternative to cash. This money can be in cash or digital format without any additional conversion. The European Central Bank defines electronic money as monetary value stored electronically and used on devices to make payments. Electronic money can only be issued by authorized institutions such as banks and electronic money institutions or EMIs. All of them are licensed to issue electronic money. In other words, all electronic money has a clear jurisdiction and as a rule is tied to a specific currency, is regulated by a central authority of the financial system like your central bank in your country or US Federal Reserve and has a clear set of beneficiaries, founders and owners. You own it. I'm the one behind this growth. This applies to PayPal, Yandex Money, Kiwi, Alipay and any other electronic money. What is cryptocurrency then? These are also a virtual digital currency, but at this time unregulated. There is no bank or other financial institution behind it, and it was created and protected from the forgery and hacking by means of encryption and using cryptographic methods. In other words, the trust in the selected cryptocurrency is achieved due to a set of various factors. First of all, transparent open code so that anyone can check it. And secondly, very clear and transparent currency supply and inflation principle to the point that it is clear to everyone that it is impossible to somehow manipulate the currency supply because there is no back doors to the code. It is also important to know that the rate of most cryptocurrencies, unlike electronic money, is mostly not stable or pegged to any currency and depends on supply and demand in the market. Therefore, we often see jumps and dips in the prices for most cryptocurrencies, while traditional electronic money are pegged to the national currencies like your euros, dollars, yuan, and so on. Bottom line is that the cryptocurrencies are issued by founders of a project, the functioning logic is laid out by the same founders, and the currency rate depends on the supply and demand. At the same time, the confidence in the currency is achieved by the fact that all transactions remain in the history forever. They cannot be erased, cancelled or changed, and the whole system cannot be stopped or banned, since it is supported by tens of millions of miners around the world. In other words, what is launched remains forever. Well, that is, if the blockchain project is found useful by the audience and it doesn't die out by itself due to simple lack of demand. Some great opportunities are opening up for us, right? Many of you might think, well, this is just fantastic, so I can just go and create my own token, launch it wherever I want, lay down my rules and sell it left and right, right? How cool is that? Looking at how central banks around the world now are going crazy printing national currencies to support local economies and its people during the pandemic, it's so tempting to imagine yourself in the place of such a private central bank, a kind of a money printing machine, right? Well, if we can directly operate the controls of such a money-making factory, then why shouldn't we? Precisely this type of thinking back in 2016-17 led to a wave of so-called ICOs, initial coin offering, when projects from different parts of the world began to attract investments in the form of crowdfunding, only the funds were accepted in the form of cryptocurrency, and in exchange for such received funds, projects would issue their own tokens or cryptocurrencies. Hundreds of thousands of different cryptocurrencies flooded the market with tons of people trying to figure out any sense in all this turmoil. It is no wonder that such massive activity attracted regulators to the field and they came in with a very blunt question. Which kind of token do you have? Utility 
or security? And as in the arena with Roman gladiators, the answer to this question either wiped the projects with their freshly baked cryptocurrencies from the face of the earth or gave them the green light to conquer the crypto world. And if you're willing to figure out why such difference in classification between utility and security tokens is so important, then make sure you watch our next episode on the token stories. So subscribe to the channel, click on the bell to make sure you don't miss our next video. And also please share in the comments below if you remember the first time that you came across the cryptocurrencies or how it just happened in your life. I'm sure that many of you, myself included, would be very interested to read your stories. It's been a great pleasure to be with you guys today. It's all a given off on Even Off Invest channel with talking stories. Have a good week and stay safe.